Hello everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley Zoo. We are uh, in the last episode of season number one. This is it. This is the last episode. And in today's episode, we are going to look at something very interesting because this is the finishing of um, our uh, penguin habitat area, which in fact is no penguin habitat anymore because unfortunately we won't get a penguin in this DLC, which is hopefully going to drop uh, very early on Tuesday because I cannot wait. I'm, I'm, I'm like super excited. Also, for the changes of the new update the 1.2 if I remember correctly and it's uh, yeah it's gonna be very interesting you can see me now tackle uh, finally this little problem we had over here with the penguin habitat um, I figured that it was basically the path thing that was a bit of an issue here and also uh, there was a little bit of an issue with the pond in uh, some of the uh, inside areas of uh, this area here. But in today's episode, you can see what I do with this little little um, plaza. And I'm going also to do a little bit of a real-time part at the end of today's episode. And tomorrow, if I don't forget, maybe I get it done, there will be a very short cinematic video of season one, which in fact will also be the intro for season two, which starts next week on hump day on Wednesday. This will be the first day um, where we are going to put something in. And you guys are here to vote. I really need your opinion now. So which of the four animals, I would say, like not five because the frog, you know, I cannot make an episode of the frog, but which of the four animals um, shall I do first for this episode? So shall I do the uh, llama or shall I do the jaguar or shall I do the... Uh, the ant eater, the giant ant eater, or maybe even uh, the capuchin uh, monkey. So you guys decide in the comments. Let me know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick um, the favorite animal that you guys want to see in Yosemite Valley. I cannot wait to bring it in. I, I do have a favorite, but I'm not saying it, uh, so maybe if, if there are enough people going for the favorite, I will do this, but I'm not going to say which one it is for uh, this uh, wonderful series over here. But one thing I can say already, this will be, this plaza here will be the, f uh, the connection to where we go, so there will be a bridge that has to be built uh, next up before we go to the other side and yeah. So it's gonna be exciting. I will hopefully be very early on on Tuesday able to play it. Uh, I, I need to check how I will, you know, manage this with work because actually I have to work on Tuesday, uh, but maybe I can do some, some more work on Monday and shift it a little bit uh, because home office at the moment might just give me the chance to do it. Who knows, but yeah. Um, mainly what's going to happen here uh, with this plaza is I'm going to try to work around all the little issues we had with the terrain and stuff like that. So there is a lot uh, problematic in, in this area, but yeah, you will hopefully see how this turns out to be in the end. Uh, another thing I wanted to quickly mention is I changed a few settings about my microphone. I hope you guys um, can hear the improvements in today's episode, at least for the, at least for the uh, recorded part now, because I did change a few settings in Premiere Pro. Uh, I googled a little bit, so also you know a tiny bit of uh, advantage from the home office time and from being uh, more at home and having more time at hand. I finally had the time to investigate uh, some some settings that might improve the sound. Uh, hopefully a little bit. I mean, the sound was already quite good lately, but I wanted to tackle a few things, especially because of my pollen allergy and also because of my little plop sounds uh, that always annoy me. Because the more time I had, the more time I had also to listen to my own episodes and especially in the recording with Shantae. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen uh, this wonderful Planet Coast episode, I'm going to link this now uh, to the top right and you guys should definitely check it out. I had a wonderful one and a half hours talk uh, with Shantae, the community manager of Frontier, um, you know, the, the studio that develops also this wonderful game over here. And uh, she's in charge of the community of Planet Coaster, but she's also very close to Bo and um, who's running the Planet Zoo uh, team. And we got a lot of great insights from uh, Frontier, how they work, how the remote work for them works. And she actually also confirms again that at, as of now, they seem to not have any delays. And um, she also tells so many cool stories about the community, about how how things, how, how feedback is um, embedded into the game. I mean, primarily we talked about Planet Coaster because we made a tour um, in my in my Isla Nampali park, but Isla Nampali is kind of my uh, Yosemite Valley of Planet uh, Coaster. So for those of you who are new to the channel or who are mainly into uh, Planet Zoo, uh, I can only recommend to check out Isla Nampali because it's basically from the, when you like this, when you like Yosemite Valley, you might like this too, because this is also very story driven. Uh, I try to embed as much as I could the feedback of you guys as a community. I try to go for a story rather than just building what I like. Um, we had so many cool little Easter eggs hidden 
and there from people from the community, which I also want to do uh, with Yosemite Valley at some point. I do have a very good idea how to embed uh, some contributors and and some of the some of the more uh, active commenters uh, down there. So you know, I I mean, uh, Kane also deserves something. Aliyah deserves something, but also Kibila lately uh, is, has been very active. Uh, Anik Mandra is always there. So a lot of people I do recognize from the comments. You know, I I do recognize also uh, you know all all the other people, um, and I, I would make some funny and and also cool dedications to them as we did with the billboards in uh, Planet Coaster too. So I highly recommend checking that out in case you haven't already. And um, I would also be very happy because the talk with Shante was super super nice, but. Uh, yeah, I had to make the point. This was the main reason why I wanted to investigate into my microphone uh, because it almost was like a podcast and I was looking into making podcasts anyways in the future. So I wanted to improve my voice quality even more. I mean, you know, as of as of now, I, I know that I can only do so much about my uh, quality of the recorded sound uh, because my voice is the, the way it is. You know, I cannot do anything about my voice. It's the way it is. I, I accepted it. And <laughs> from the very first moment of... Uh, recording four years ago which was the most awkward moment in my life I guess uh, it, it got a lot better because you start to accept your voice it's the way it is and uh, either people like it or don't but there is not much you can do about it however there is a lot I could do about this penguin over here and uh, talking of story I loved I loved the idea that you guys were basically um, Right, and, and saying, hey, what about uh, calling this an abandoned habitat, which has been primarily used for penguins in the past, but uh, due to some changes in the zoo, you needed to get rid of them or you needed to sell them to another uh, area. And I was like, I was so convinced from that story. I was so uh, happy that you guys came up with such a cool idea. I, I just took it to another level and made a dedication billboard. Uh, also, um, props to Ricey again, our font queen. She's also making some beautiful, beautiful education boards in a very lovely style. And I got really inspired um, to do one as well because I, I found this a cool idea to to just bring something in. And even, even though this, this penguin might be a bit more comic-y, I wanted to go for a Humboldt uh, penguin as good as I can over here. And I wanted to uh, make sure that you can yeah, really see that. I mean, there is room for improvement. It's not the perfect uh, art shape animal you can do. I, I know that there is a lot more uh, a lot more potential in here, but for the moment, uh, I think this is just fine. I wanted to make like a very nice dedication board, and I really hope that in the future we might even be getting some billboard options to bring in our own custom images or maybe even custom screenshots. And if in the future we might get penguins, uh, that would be the perfect moment to change that. But yeah, I, I just loved the idea of having that, and I went even one step further and I put in the um, like a map, like a Google Maps uh, thing, where you can see the origin country of the animals. So I was kind of doing a little bit of a continent here of uh, South America and even putting in like a little uh, marker for where they're living. So I thought this was a, a nice little touch that uh, is yeah just um, also putting in the uh, islands of Hawaii. This is almost like a little Easter egg to uh, to Isla Napali, which is so cool. I mean, I, I, this is the kind of stuff I really love about these projects. Like you can embed so much, and even though this is like only like only a game, so many people know about this, and so many people are um, kind of part of my story. So that's really cool, and I love it. And uh, yeah, so I, I really had the idea of just quickly doing it. And yeah, you can see this is now me trying to make that little uh, <laughs> little check mark, or how you want to call it. It's basically the little uh, it's a little circle that kind of shows you where the animals live. And uh, I failed a little bit of, of putting this thing in the right position, but eventually I managed to do it. Uh, you can see this is actually, it's working better than I expected. So it's actually like a little circle showing where they live. Um, on the it's the east coast of South America. Is it the east coast? Uh, I'm stupid. No, that's the west coast, obviously. Uh, <laughs> oh god, I'm so stupid. Um, it's definitely the west coast. But yeah, I was I was trying to get in with some more elements here, like a little golden uh, design element. But eventually, I didn't like it on the side so much, so that I I I started changing it a bit more because I wanted to have some more metal-ish things in here. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what I did about the sign. And I have to say, I'm really, I'm really happy with how the sign turned out. It's really looking um, very solid. Like it's really looking like something that is here, like a dedication board. It's on the other side, so you don't get fooled around with uh, that this habitat on the left-hand side, which I, by the way, um, 
made into a flamingo habitat. So I, I actually did it. I, I made the flamingo habitat as many people were uh, suggesting and I found this also a bit of a good idea. So yeah, eventually I am quite happy with how this turned out. Also, I tried to put in a ACM in a second, you will see, uh, but it didn't really fit in. Uh, I, I thought this would be nice because people make some uh, interaction with it. But at the end of the day, um, what I will do is I will sink in an education board uh, into this. I think, did I even do this already in this episode? I think I did off screen. Um, I just sunk in a, uh, a um, uh, education board into this um, sign. And so people look at it uh, and it looks almost like they look at the uh, dedication board. Got education, dedication, got these words also similar. But yeah, so the rest of this episode will be now about planters and getting in the little plants. And I think I'm going to end my commentary here. Uh, and I already start recording now the real time part. But you will have another two ish, three ish minutes of uh, speed build now. And then we see each other in. Oh, there we go. This is the education board, by the way, sunken in there. Um, and then we see each other in the real time part. And I hope you enjoy the last couple minutes of this time lapse. So see you in a few minutes. All right, as promised, we are in the real time part. And this is the final plaza, as you can see. So there's a lot happened. I I did a lot of stuff uh, I didn't even record. So you can see there are also um, uh, some kind of little curtains here that are basically hinting at what will be season number two. Uh, so this park is, as I said, it, you can grab it now from the description. It's available in exactly this state. So there's nothing that has changed. Um, I didn't do anything more than what you see right now. You can explore this park yourself. Um, obviously, you have to open Open it. You can <laughs> try to fix all the issues I have in the zoo, like play-wise, because obviously I didn't uh, manage to uh, set all the rosters and stuff. So yeah, definitely something that I do need to do uh, in the future. But you can see this is the flamingo habitat as of now. Uh, you can see the animals are here. I forgot, I guess I forgot to put in something to eat for them. Um, uh, they have a water bowl and stuff. I think that, uh, yeah, the keepers just throw it uh, down to the floor, which I think is not that bad because of all the stones and stuff you have. Um, so yeah, this is this is how it looks, and I think it's really fitting for the flamingos. I managed, as you can see, to bring in all the water. It's uh, really cool. Uh, it is kind of um, 
yeah, already waiting for the penguins in the future to be entered and to be uh, put in the game. I made sure that we have a lot of education boards and several spaces. We have this little, um, yeah, uh, railing over here that uh, people are not going too close uh, to these windows, which I think is a good one. Uh, also, by the way, uh, sorry for the V-Sync uh, little streams. I forgot to deactivate the V-Sync. I think it's not too bad. Yeah, you have seen uh, lately I did a little bit of backstage work here so that this doesn't look as ugly. And if you go in here, I even tried to make the backstage even look a little bit more finished you know this is kind of not really like maintained garden but it almost looks like there is a little bit of a garden and uh yeah the pathway looks a bit bad i might need to change it into a bit more natural pathing anyways but yeah i think it looks good and then we have the entrance to this building over here and with some lights on the wall and if you go around that corner this is an area i haven't tackled yet mainly because you guys asked for potentially the giant ant eater and if we are here to bring this in i'm not you know i i ask you to tell me which animal first but um in terms of the story the gen uh, the general idea with the giant ant eater it could definitely be put in here so there is a good chance that i would be able to put it here so there is enough space to enlarge this uh, habitat uh, or this, like this night house enough so if you guys are in for the idea um we could put it here or alternatively there is also some space available on this side over here Oh, there's something flying on here that's not good um i i should have deleted that um because <laughs> this is not meant to be in here anyhow um there's a flying piece for you in, in case you want but <laughs> Dang it, I didn't see that I left it in. Um, but yeah, there, there would also be enough space to kind of um, extrude the night house to exactly the other way around. Um, doing that, I, I see two main advantages, to be honest, but you guys are up for, you know, uh, commenting. So the first advantage is that um, we keep this more natural flow over here towards the river, which I like because we have a lot of... Um, yeah, just foliage and it, it kind of makes sense in, in the way it is over here. And also it also embeds everything is very nice and whatever. So I think this feels at least for me very good and very, very real. And the second advantage obviously would be um, that we could connect it directly to this um, uh, to the backstage area. So we could actually try to squeeze it all the way in here and just connect it. However, I also see two main disadvantages. So first disadvantage being this area, it's getting a lot more cramped. Like if you look at here, we would have like only buildings all in the middle. God, uh, sorry, this is, this is too un... Uh, to the depth of field is uh, going to be annoying. So yeah, we would have building and building and building. And I don't know if that looks good because it might look a bit cramped. I mean, you could do a lot with the perspective. So if we go down, I think it wouldn't feel too cramped. But honestly, the nature around makes sense here for me. It all looks, it all looks like it has to be that way. And I am... Honestly, I would feel bad uh, putting another building here because it all makes sense. You have all these wonderful views and the light is still coming in. And there's a lot that is um, that I like about this. So all in all, I, I quite think that, you know, this, even though there are two main advantages of putting it here, um, the, the main idea should be to extrude it to this backside here or maybe even to this side and then we kind of have to build a bridge for the people because honestly going into this building we have another major problem which uh, then is the current layout of this building does not really allow to extrude that in one uh, direction. So my, what we could do obviously is if we if we take the path and we build the path somewhat like let's say let's say through here okay because that would then go to this wait no. That was wrong. Wait, how is that even? Okay, see, I'm confused myself. So where do I get if I go here? Oh, wait a second. That makes actually a lot of sense. So what, yeah, well, okay. What we could do then is we could actually extrude the path just from over here. Just build like a little bridge area just down here. And then you're already in that area. Okay, that makes total sense. So in terms of the layout, that totally fits because we could go in here. We still have this entrance. We could make like a little tunnel, dig down here and make this pass with the new pass options. Um, also should be easier to do it uh, in the update. So make like a little bridge that goes over here, then just goes the, down here. And we can do the same with the backstage path. So maybe we just build a tunnel or like a bridge for the staff members. I'm, I think I'm, I'm more in for a tunnel, to be honest, uh, that they go through here. 
and then we have yeah i think that makes total sense what do you think guys but yeah let me know in the comments down below because i i will need to know first if you guys are in for which new animal and then we have to decide whether you want to have like a, the giant ant eater in a new tropical house or if we should put it into the night house uh in here as well any house that should be it from my side to make this episode not too awfully long and i really would love to see all of your comments and make sure to download your Summit valley it's available for you now in the comments and uh, i really want to have the ratings i want to have your feedback and please make sure if you check it out to give me all of your hints and notes where i forgot some stuff because obviously on the road uh I might have forgotten a lot of things. And if you find something that is broken or that is not working because I was too stupid to put it down correctly, uh, let me know uh, Let me know too because, again, I, I would potentially forget it. And then we might just do one revamp episode at a certain time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, so I really hope that you liked today's episode. It was a blast for me and I really hope to see you in the next one too. Until then, have a great time. Stay safe, everyone. And we see each other again on Wednesday with Yosemite Valley and a lot of cool stuff, hopefully on, on Tuesday in a live stream or whatever. I'll let you know how I tackle the Tuesday. So let's see that. And uh, until then, have a good time. Goodbye, everyone.